Now before I start this video, I have to apologise about this railing behind me. Um, I'm having problems on my S1H at the moment, it won't continuous autofocus track. Won't do it. I've tried for half an hour, it won't work. I can't even get my app, the Panasonic app, to connect to the camera. For some reason it's not working. So if I'm slightly out of focus, I do apologise. I've focused on the railing and I've set the camera at F8, so hopefully I'm in focus. Hopefully all good. Now no more complaining, let's get on with the video. Now this video is part of a series of videos that I'm doing comparing films next to each other with two Nikon F100s and 50mm 1.8 D series lenses on both cameras, so they're identical to each other. I shoot one of the films with aperture priority mode in one Nikon F100 with spot metering, and then I copy those settings to the other camera and I take the same shot within a few seconds of each other. So there's no light shifting or anything, so I'm getting them as close as I possibly can. Now, the two films I'm using at the moment is um, Kodak Portra 160 and this weird film, Lumachrome Purple, which I've seen a few videos on YouTube about it and it looks quite interesting. So what I've done, I've shot with the Portra 160 at box speed, 160, and I've shot the Lumachrome Purple at 160 as well. Now what I've done, I've taken them to a local lab here, they've developed them for me, and hopefully I will pick up the negatives before I go back to New Zealand. Because if I haven't picked up the negatives, you won't see this video. So if you're watching this video, I've got my negatives, and you're about to see a slideshow now. Now the slideshow is these two films shot at the same time, with the same cameras and the same settings. So you can see what Portra 160 looks like and what the Lumachrome Purple does to a normal scene, basically. Hope you enjoyed the slideshow. Now before I start to talk about this Lumachrome Purple, um, I want to let you guys know that I've picked the two winners from my last two videos and I've listed them in my community page. So if you liked, subscribed and commented on my last two videos and subscribed to my channel, you're in for a chance to win the film that I was reviewing basically on those videos. And the same goes with this video as well. I have a roll of 120 Lumachrome Purple and 35mm roll. Now all you have to do is to comment on this video and like this video and be a subscriber to my channel. It's as easy as that. And then in two weeks, I will pick a winner and I will send these films anywhere in the world to you. You have to just contact me when I put the winner up, send me an email, send me your address, and I will send you these rolls of film anywhere in the world free of charge. I pay the postage. So remember to do that. Now, let's talk about the film. Actually, I grabbed the roll here. Here's the film. Um, yeah, it's quite unique. Um, the reason why I put up against Portra is I use Portra basically as a benchmark film for me. I do like to use a lot of Portra, Portra 160 and 400. Um, so what I did was the first um, image that you saw was of this, which is a standard color checker basically. And what I wanted to show you guys was the shift in color of what Lumachrome Purple does to the actual scenery, because it's very easy to take photographs but you don't actually see what the shift is and what the other colors are. So what I did, I walked around for about an hour, hour and a half, because I actually was there with Robin and he met up with some of his subscribers. So I let them disappear off, have a chat. And I walked around for about an hour and a half taking some shots. Now I used, as I said in the video, two Nikon F100s and 50 mil 1.8 D series lenses. And I shot one camera in aperture priority spot metering and the other camera was in manual mode. So I just copied those settings over and I shot them in about 10 seconds of each other. It's still quite a juggle to use two cameras at the same time, but I'm getting used to it. Um, I probably will change the lenses. Um, 
the 50 mil is a bit tight for me. I'll probably go for 28 um, f 2.8 D series lenses for both cameras. I'll pick up a couple of them over the next few weeks and I will shoot the other videos that I will do later on with 28 mil lenses. The film is quite interesting, I must admit. Um, the one thing I would recommend is don't shoot people with it because they turn purple. Unless you're going for that look, I mean, that's perfect. But some of the buildings of the temples and the big um, opera house, I think one of them is, I may be wrong, but, or concert house, no, it's a concert house. Um, the greens and the reds and the green grass outside went purple and the reds go a slightly off red, really. That looked really good. I did like the look of that. And the gates at the main entrance, the big white building, with that little bit of purple tinge to it was amazing. And for that, that's where this film comes in very nice. Now you have to remember in the digital world, you can manipulate a photo as much as you want. That image is digital, you can change as much as you want. And that's why it's important to see what film can do because really you can't change this very much. Um, you can alter them a little bit, but not as much as you can with digital, obviously. So it's nice to see what a film can do and actually see how it compares to a standard film like Kodak Portra. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, this was shot at ISO 160. Now this film is rated from 100 to 400. So it's roughly in the middle. Um, and it's C41 um, chemical to develop it. Now the lab I spoke to and I had it developed in, I have a chat with the guy there and he told me both roles were developed in the same time. So they've done as close to each other as possible with the same machine. But you can really see the difference. Um, yeah, the sky I like, I must admit, that pale blue look it gives the sky, it's got a green tinge to it, it looks quite nice on some of the photos. Um, would I use this all the time? Probably not. But I will keep a roll of it in my bag um, because I do like the look it gives me sometimes and it does change the scenery. Um, and it's nice to shoot, I must admit. It was, um, it was fun to shoot, especially compare it to Portra. Now, what I'm gonna be doing over the next few weeks once I've caught up my videos, because there's two more videos coming out. Um, I think I do, if I remember right, Acros. I was able to pick up some Acros out there, 35 mil, and that's up against Kodak T-Max 100. And then I've tested two Ilford 400 films, 400 speed films against each other as well. So they will be coming over the next few days because I did them while I'm in Taiwan. I just need to catch up with those videos. Now, also what I'll be doing later on is I will be using my Mamiya 645 because I now have two backs for this. So I will start to test 120 film. So if there's any 120 film you want me to test or 35 mil film, leave me a comment down below and let me know what film you want me to test and put up against each other really to see the comparison. Because the nice thing about this is they're shot at exactly the same time with the same cameras, same lenses. So you're actually seeing the film, not the different light situation or anything like that. Now on to another thing. While I was in Taiwan, oh, I picked up some film. Um, I was able to get some Acros 120 out there. Um, the free patch you see there was all the shop had apart from one roll. So I basically bought all the shop had because I can't get this in New Zealand. And I've looked online, it's quite expensive to ship to me. So I've actually got three packs of 120 Acros. Now that's for um, a project because I have a new medium format camera, which I will discuss next week. Um, while I was in Taiwan, I was able to purchase a camera. Um, it was actually here in New Zealand. Um, I purchased it online, it came up. I've been looking one for quite a while. So I have a new medium format camera um, and I will be talking about that next week. And this film is for that project. So the Acros will come in very handy because I hear it's a very good film for landscapes and architecture. So that's what that film's for. Now these two packs here is Pro 160 NS. Now apparently this is a discontinued film. So Robin told me that, so I bought the last two packs they had. So I'm actually gonna put this up against Portra 160, 120 film over the next few weeks and see how that compares. Now remember with all my videos on film, you have a chance to win that film. So if you wanna test some of this, um, subscribe to the channel because that video will be coming in a few weeks and I will send you two rolls of this. I won't send you a roll of 35 because I don't have any 35. So what I would do, I'll send you two rolls of 120 um, Pro 160 color film from Fuji, which would be quite interesting to see how good that is. I hear very good things about that film. So that's it for this video. Um, what do you actually think of the Lumachrome Purple? My personal opinion is it's not something I would shoot all the time, but it, it does add a little bit of um, difference to the photos, I have to say. And some of the photos I actually like, um, they've all been scanned exactly the same way. And what you get from the files, especially with the real dark greens and other colors in the scenery, it's actually really nice. Now, as I shot them, I tried to cover as many colors as I can as I walked around. I think there's even a yellow truck in there somewhere, like a sewage truck or something. So you can see how that changes the color with the film. The only thing I would say is be prepared, it's quite a noisy film. Um, you do lose sharpness in the image. 
Um, I was quite shocked at how noisy the actual film was compared to Portrait 160. I know it's a variable ISO or ASA film, so you can either shoot at 100 or right up to 400. And I shot it quite low at 160, but it still has a lot of noise, so you have to be prepared for that. Now, is that something you would use? Would you use Lumachrome Purple? If so, let me know down in the comments. And also let me know any other 35mm or 120 films you want me to test up against each other. They were actually for my own personal curiosity, really. Um, I wanted to see how the two films compare, because it's okay to shoot a roll of film, but if you don't have a base to come from or another film to compare it to, you don't actually know how different it is. So these videos will be happening more and more now because I'm actually enjoying these. And as always, thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe, like, and comment to be in a chance to win a roll of 120 and 35 Lumachrome Purple, which I will send anywhere in the world free of charge.